How you doing? We're Tremonti, and uh, you're watching our hard drive, Ask Anything Chat. And we want to thank Lou Brutus and the United Stations for having us on to discuss your new album, A Dying Machine. So, uh, question number one, Jeff from Copenhagen. Could you take us through how you go about writing a song, Jay? So writing a song could, I mean, you could go about it in so many different ways, and we go about it in many different ways. It's always, it's always kind of a moving target trying to capture lightning in a bottle, but I think the, uh, for me personally, the beginnings of a song happen um, when, I'm, when I'm alone. I, I need to write alone at first, and then kind of spawn the ideas that way, organize them as well as I can, and then I get with, if, if it's in this band, I get with Eric, and say, check out these ideas I've, um, I'm, I'm um, putting together. And then, you know, you kind of grasp a uh, excitement level for the things. It's, it's hard to write in a bubble sometimes. You know, it's hard to be... Uh, sometimes you think something's good and you want to get that uh, second opinion that, that somebody else thinks is good so you can kind of move forward with it. Same thing with an altar bridge I get with Miles and do the same thing. Um, but... Uh, Sometimes a song could start with a guitar riff, it could start with a simple melody over a chord progression, it could start with a drum loop, it could start with anything really. So it's, there's, no, there's no rules, it's all kind of uh, just uh, trying to throw ideas out as many as you can and, and try to lasso the, the best song you can out of, <laughs> out of the sky. You know, it's, just, it's what's cool about songwriting, it's, it's creating something out of nothing. So Jason from Perth says, hey guys, you think you're going to bring your Tremonti project to Australia? And we really want to, you know, it'd be uh, the perfect time on this tour would probably be right around, maybe before we head to Europe on next summer's festivals, depending on how we do with the Alter Bridge recording in the spring. So, uh, you know, trust us, we, we really want to get there. You know, we've had so much fun down there with, with uh, Alter Bridge and uh, we know it's going to be just as fun with Tremonti. So fingers crossed. Yeah. Okay, Richard from Mansfield says, Mark, in your book, A Dying Machine, is the main character Stella Gibbons named after your guitar that you also named Stella? <laughs> and it's her surname Gibbons after Billy Gibbons, who is the only other PRS artist that happens to have an Explorer-type guitar made like yours. That's funny. Very good question. That's funny. Yes and yes and no, but that would be cool if I thought of that. I know. <laughs> um, so Stella Gibbons, uh, Stella was a name that uh, me and my wife always wanted to name our daughter as Stella if we had a daughter. Um, so Stella became my guitar's name because we didn't have a daughter, we had boys. And then uh, in the book, what else could the character be other than Stella? And then Gibbons was absolutely inspired from Billy Gibbons. Brennan Gibbons was the main first character in the book, but uh, it had nothing to do with the guitars. It was just because Gibbons is, you know, the coolest guy in the world. That's really cool actually though that they put that together. Rachel from Staten Island, uh, where were you guys born and when's your birthdays? Well, I was born in Orange County, California, and my birthday is June 28, 1984. And uh, I was born in Detroit, Michigan on uh, April 18th, uh, 2000. <laughs> just, just turn 18. <laughs> uh, uh, Lana from Nashville. I don't know if it's Lana or Lana, but um, if you could add a celebrity to Mount Rushmore, who would it be and why? <laughs> right off the top of my head, I'd say Robert De Niro because he's the coolest actor there's ever been, in my opinion. So, I'm going to just go ahead and put Steve Ray Vaughan up there. Yeah, that would be great. Why? Uh, duh, that's my answer. <laughs> oh, wow, look at this. Matt from Toronto. Hey, guys, what's your favorite Stevie Ray Vaughan lick? Uh, the one that made you really dig his work. I don't know if I'd call it a lick, but the entire song, Lenny is one of my favorite SRV tracks. I spent um, a lot of time trying to play it, and uh, you know, it's just so inspiring, and, and uh, he's such a passionate player, and such a just absolute master. You can't go wrong with a single one of his licks, but uh, you know, it's hard to say one single lick. They're all just sick. I know. Uh, probably for me, Texas Flood. I love that one. Just the whole thing. But I love Lenny too, just like Mark said. Cold Shot was one of the first licks I probably learned from mm -hmm. Stevie Ray, so that's another big one. Natasha from Montreal. What cologne do you use? I don't use any cologne. Um, this is going to be funny. <laughs> I just, 
just don't like the smell of cologne. I think it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> you stink! Uh, I, um, are you guys ready for this? I use Creed cologne. <laughs> <laughs> but it has nothing to do with the band. It's a really old fragrance, I guess, but it's good. You just said fragrance. Yeah. That's I why do. I don't wear cologne. <laughs> Tanya from Oakland. If you were MMA fighters, who in the band would win in the octagon? What would your cage names be? Um, <clears throat> well, my cage name would <laughs> this probably is so, be... a weird question. <laughs> <laughs> my cage name would be TRUE, just T-R-U, all caps. And I would win in the octagon. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know. Everyone calls me E-Rock, so I'd be E-Rock, and uh, Mark would win because he's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Darla from Morgantown. Favorite Halloween candy and costume? Uh, my favorite costume of all time is when I was a Benihana chef, because Benihana is my favorite restaurant, and uh, the manager at our at a store in, in Florida. Let me borrow one for Halloween. And uh, my favorite candy, uh, I don't know. Uh, there's so many. Uh, uh, Sour Patch Kids are pretty damn good. <laughs> um, candy, uh, I would say for Halloween, I like the candy corns. A lot of people hate them. I like them a lot. Costume, um, man, this is tough, but I can just say this year I'm going to be uh, Branch from Trolls because my daughter's going to be Poppy. <laughs> nice. Uh, L from Starkville. Mark, I really enjoyed a Dying Machine novel, but it ended on a cliffhanger. Do you have a timeline for the follow-up or sequel? You know, it was um, initially, we didn't really, I didn't really want it to have uh, a cliffhanger, but I had so much fun putting this book together and the story together that uh, I started getting really depressed towards three quarters through the, the the book because I wanted I loved this this so much. Um, I talked and got with um, with John and said you know we have to have something that leaves an open end to it that doesn't make people angry that the story wasn't finished. So it's still a satisfying end to the story, but it leaves it open up open ended enough to be able to continue the story. Um, I'm looking for a publishing deal right now for this book itself, and if that happens and it's um, successful in any way, I'd, I would love to do the follow-up, and uh, I'm already running ideas through my head, so uh, thanks for reading it. Mallory from Myrtle Beach, any new merch coming out? Yeah, I have a new merch is always a moving target. We're always coming up with new stuff. I Hopefully before we go back out to um, our next European tour, we have maybe a good six new shirts and some some other things some uh maybe some socks and some sweaters and some hats and <laughs> always you let us know what you want we'll get it for you yeah that's a good one uh, david from rosetta uh what's the most bizarre thing you've ever seen on the road and who's been your favorite band to tour with thus far um my most bizarre thing to ever see on the road uh and my favorite band to tour with thus far would probably be iron maiden not probably, absolutely Iron Maiden. And being the most bizarre thing is just like walking in the catering and running by Bruce Dickinson and like walking in backstage and seeing Eddie's and stuff. That's it's bizarre to know that we shared the stage with those legends. Have you ever been to tour with for me? Definitely Iron Maiden. Um, most bizarre thing I've ever seen on the road. I will have to say when we were playing, um, opening up for Alter Bridge and it was, uh, it was, I think it was Hinder Submersed Alter Bridge. And um, Hinder was opening, it was their very first tour. And their, I think he's, uh, their band member, his name's Blower, he calls himself. He jumped in like, I don't know what you call it, but he jumped in the water, he took all his clothes off. And he jumped in the water and he got like some kind of disease or something. It was like oh, super, no. super, super cold and freezing. And uh, I know he caught something. I th he's probably still got it with him today. I don't know what it was. So. Pretty bizarre. <laughs> Linda from Jacksonville. If you could be on a billboard in Times Square with anybody, who would it be and what would the theme be? That's a, that's a, that's a thinker, Linda. <laughs> um, hmm. What do you think, E-Rock? You go first. 
I would like to be on a billboard with Mark Tremonti uh, <laughs> promoting our new album. Wow, that's a good answer and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> Josh from Fort Drum. Out of your bands, past and current, musically, which are you most proud of or feel you've accomplished the most? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm more proud of one it's kinda over hard. the other, you know, but uh, I'm most proud of, at this moment of the Dying Machine record. You know, I think that's uh, this band's best record and uh, it was really um, a long road of putting it together and we're very proud with every bit of it. So it's, uh, you know, I'd say, I'd say with, uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. I would have to agree. Amy from Rochester. What is your favorite Tremonti song to sing in concert? Thank you for the music. I absolutely love this band. My favorite song to sing is Dying Machine. Um, it's my favorite song off the new record. It's kind of the seed that planned the whole theme for this album, and it's just an important song. And uh, even though it's a fictional story, I get emotional about it, you know, and I, I, uh, I love it. I agree on that as well. Mia from Croatia. Um, Maya or Mia, how did you playing? How did you like playing in Zagreb, Croatia? And is there a chance Tremonti will come back to headline in Zagreb? Love you guys. You are the best. Absolutely love Croatia. It was my favorite country. I had never been to before, and uh, we will be going back there as much as we possibly can. And uh, if if we're invited there, if, if a promoter um, asks us to play there, we are there. So yes. If you build it, they will come. Yes. Matt from Chicago, what's your all-time favorite metal album? Master of Puppets. Oh, no question. I like Vulgar Display of Power. I don't know. I like them all. It's really just You're like younger than me. It's impossible. I love that record too. Cheryl from Los Angeles, if Steve Harvey invited if if Steve Harvey invited you on Family Feud, what other rock band would you want to go up against? I think Steve Harvey's one of the funniest people on earth. I love I Family Feud. Be, I watch <laughs> Family Feud constantly. We watch it on the bus. And I feel like I'm pretty good at it. I just feel like I might freeze under the, under pressure. You know um, who I don't want to go against is Kill Switch Engage because remember we did that oh, one yeah, thing with them on. and they were so good. They just knew everything. Those guys are smart. Um, who would we go up against? Um, hmm. Seven Dust. That would be awesome. Yeah, because we're like. Two different families. And we basically do that <laughs> many yeah, ways. Yeah. We just had a family feud party. Raphael from Bircher, what is the hardest thing in an album production? For me, it's writing, uh, putting and organizing all the guitar solos. It's a pain, you know, because you got, first you're just worried about getting the songs down and getting the lyrics finished and whatnot. And then you have, once you finish your rhythm guitars, you have this countdown of three weeks or whatever it is before you have to be completely prepared. Sometimes I have 12 guitar solos on a record and uh, you frantically try to learn as many things as you possibly can so you're not regurgitating the same stuff, stuff you always do and even after I finish recording a record I'm starting to try and learn as much as I can so uh, I have new material but that's that's one of the most challenging things. Kim from Cleveland, best concert t-shirt you owned growing up? Mine was probably a Megadeth shirt. When I went to go see uh, uh, Clash of the Titans, I believe it was. I think it was uh, Alice in Chains, Megadeth, Anthrax, and Slayer. I believe it's when their um, I think when their their big single was Anarchy in the UK at the time. But uh, yeah, I'm a Megadeth shirt. This is totally different from yours, but um, probably my first concert T-shirt, which was Vince Skill. Or possibly Kenny Wayne Shepherd shirt that was like five sizes too big for me. That's legit. <laughs> Lonnie from Hacienda Heights. Um, hi, love you guys so much. Thank you. Uh, what's something you love about being in the band? Um, best thing is just expressing yourself artistically. If I if I wasn't able to write songs, I I wouldn't be who I am. And and uh, being able to you know create something intangible that people connect with so much. Yeah, I love creating things that people can relate to, but uh, as far as the fun meter, probably touring and playing shows and meeting everyone. So we want to thank Lou Brutus again for having us on Hard Drive for the Ask Anything uh, questions that you guys have uh, given us, and uh, thank you so much, and check out a new record of Dying Machine.